What's going on guys, Killer6 back here with another Borderlands 2 Top 10 and today we're taking a look at the 10 rarest enemies on Pandora. So let's just jump right in. And the award for last place in a Top 10 list goes to number 10! Getting us started at number 10 is the Black Queen. This mini boss is located in the far back portion of the dust behind Boot Hill where you fight Mobley and Gettle. But what makes her rare is she randomly spawns. Unlike all the other mini bosses in the dust, you never know for sure if she'll be there. She does, however, have a chance to drop the Nukem, a legendary rocket launcher, so it's worth the farm. Number 9! This better be good! Number 9 is Muscles. I recently covered this enemy and found out that a large amount of players have seen him, but then there are players like me who've been around since day one with thousands of hours who haven't seen him. The reason for this might be as simple as the fact that many of us day one players have Rocco's Modern Strife active so we can farm thousand cuts without enemy interruption. Regardless, Muscles is an interesting foe, but sadly has no dedicated drop. Eight! Eight's a good number! A strong, solid number, you know what I mean? Number eight, Mr. Bubbles and Little Sis. This duo is located in Magni's Lighthouse in the Captain Scarlet DLC, but they don't spawn often. I wager a large percentage of the Borderlands community has never seen this duo, simply because that area is one that you pass through once during the story, and then you have no real reason to come back. There are no bosses or mini bosses in the area and no legendary dropping enemies to be found. This duo is worth farming though as killing Mr. Bubbles without harming Little Sis will lead to Little Sis offering you the little Eevee pistol which can be used to abuse cooldown timers for character special abilities. On to lucky number 7 which for a top 10 list is kinda mediocre. Coming in at number 7 is Vermivorous. This hidden raid boss is rare simply because you almost have to have a group of players to get her to spawn. It is possible to spawn her as a solo player, but the odds are pretty low. Even with a group of four, me and my friends spent plenty of nights trying to get her to spawn to get those elusive Norfleets, only to go to bed empty-handed. So if you want to find Vermi, your best bet is to group up with some friends and go to either the Tundra Express farmhouse or Caustic Caverns and try to involve some barkets. And now for number six! Number six is Spider Pants. This rare enemy is only available in one small area of one large map in the Mines of Avarice. Like many of the enemies on this list, Spider Pants doesn't appear every time you pass through the area, and he has no dedicated drops. Apparently this creature is the result of a Gearbox forum post where a user created a guide on how to farm spider ants, but accidentally misspelled it as Spider Pants. That led to forum members coming up with some crafty things including a drawing of a spider ant with a top hat and a monocle. This was then picked up on by Gearbox who included the character as a nod to that particular trolley forum thread. Number 5! Coming in at number 5, Warlord Slog. This is another one of those mini bosses that people don't see often because he's so hard to get to. You have to survive multiple rounds in the Myrtleland's Temple of Slaughter, which includes plenty of traps, badass enemies, and tons of ways to die. Based on the difficulty of completing all the rounds, I'd venture to say probably less than 5% of the fan base has even fought and killed Warlord Slog. The worst part is Slog has a chance to drop the Ogre, one of the better assault rifles in the game, but it's not even a 100% chance. Imagine grinding solo through this slaughterhouse in search of the elusive ogre, only to come away empty-handed. Okay, here we are at number four! Coming in at number four is Iron God. A badass iron golem whose core has been destroyed becomes an unbound iron golem, but he can level himself up via killing other enemies. As he kills enemies, his level rises and his name changes. From unbound, he becomes reckless iron golem, then nasty iron golem, followed by imposing Iron Golem and culminating with Iron God when he reaches level 92. At that point, the Iron God becomes one of the most fearsome enemies in the game as his health will rise to staggeringly high numbers and his damage reduction becomes 99.2%. This means he takes less than 1% of the damage you inflict upon him. This becomes essentially another raid boss at this point, but sadly the Iron God has an astonishingly terrible loot pool. He does, however, occasionally drop gemstone prefix weapons, which can normally only be obtained from Butt Stallion. And now we're down to number three! Number three is Om Dome Ock. Good old Triple O, as he's affectionately known within the Borderlands community, is rare for a number of reasons, mainly because you have to level up badass savages via Witch Doctor in order to evolve him. There are three good places for doing this. Hunter's Grotto by activating the totems that summon Dexidius the Invincible on Wham Bam Island in the very first area, or in Skyless Grove in the southeast portion of the map. The majority of people get Triple O in Skyless Grove as it seems to be the most straightforward spawn, requiring the least amount of work and travel. Triple O is so rare that I was unable to get my own footage of him for this video, so big thanks goes to Broco Gaming and Dyna Fay. Make sure you check out their channels in the description below. Number two! Number two are the adorable but deadly tubby 
Loot Midgets. These elusive little guys are so rare that most players have never seen one legitimately, myself included. The only time I've ever seen these guys is via Cheat Engine, as you see here, where I like to swap in a bunch of them all at once just for fun. The interesting thing about Tubby Loot Midgets is that their loot drops act more like Tubby Loot Drops and less like Midget Drops. In other words, they are much more likely to drop Pearlescence and Legendary items than a normal Loot Midget would, and they never ever ever drop Seraph Relics. Now the best place to possibly find these guys is either in Sawtooth Cauldron, as you can see in this video, or in Fink Slaughterhouse, where I've seen other players get one legitimately before. Okay, here it is, the Big Kahuna, number one! And finally, coming in at number one is the legendary loot midget, God Lyeth. Now, I've never personally gotten one of these guys legitimately, but my buddy Joltsdude139 has, and there's a link to his video about it down in the description down below. But basically, there are four rare versions of loot midgets in the game, in addition to the previously mentioned tubby version. They are the legendary loot midget nomad, Goliath, Psycho, and Rat. Now, of those four, only one can be evolved into a loot midget god Lyath, and that's of course the midget Goliath. Simply shoot off his helmet and let him run the map, killing other enemies, and he will evolve. After enough evolutions, he becomes a loot midget god Lyath, an enemy so rare that I'm pretty sure the Jolts dude is the only one with the legitimate footage of it. So there you have it, my top 10 rarest enemies in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then please be sure to drop a like. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe for more top 10s, tips, tricks, and daily live streams. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.